Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Control Style Delete Podcast, or CSD Cast for short. This is a podcast about all things fun in gaming. That's right, we talk about video games, tabletop board games, D&D, and game music and audio. I'm your host, Sonny Bertoli, and thank you for joining us. This podcast is recorded in video format, posted on our YouTube channel, along with our other amazing play and video content. Well, the audio version of the show that you might be hearing right now airs every Tuesday on all major podcast streaming platforms. And hey, if you want to leave a comment or review on iTunes, it'll be fully appreciated. Make sure to join our follow list on our website, csdcast.com, so that you don't miss most of our content, including all of our socials. At csdcast is the usual handle for these accounts, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you would like to submit a question to be answered on our podcast, submit it to email at csdcast.com. We will read it and answer it the best that we can. Last but not least, our Patreon account is live, which is a constant work in progress and will be packed full of exclusive content for you. So if you feel so inclined, consider joining one of our fantastic membership tiers. And with that, let's start the episode. Uh, so today... I was going to go to the gym in the morning, but uh, we went to bed a little bit too late last night, so that didn't happen. But I will make sure to update you when that does officially happen, because, uh, you know, cardio is just one of those things you can't really rush, so, uh, you know, you can just seriously injure yourself. So I plan to just do kind of a brisk walk, if you will, to kind of a jogging, light jog maybe, just for a little bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes at a time just to kind of ease into things. Um, I have been lifting weights for a couple months now, about like three or four days a week. So I do have, you know, some movement happening at least with my body. But, uh, you know, it's not the same as getting your whole body uh, moving and keeping your heart rate up for an extended period of time, like what cardio does. So, you know, my wife and I, we're, we're trying to be a little more healthy as a whole uh, before it's too late to start, you know. <laughs> so, um also, we had company over this past Saturday, which was fun. I mentioned in the uh, previous podcast episode that I would be running Session Zero of Tyranny of Dragons D&D campaign, and that is exactly what we did. We went through character creation, which did get them all excited to start playing, and I have my work cut out for me, that's for sure. Uh, we decided to start Session 1 in about two weeks. So quickly moving those things along, which is, you know, a good thing because these campaigns can take, you know, a year or more to complete and can definitely take much, much less time when the group is able to get together much more often. So that's all that's happening in my life currently. Let's move on to this week review. Alrighty, for this segment today, I don't have a specific review, however, we did just recently release a new video on our YouTube channel, which kicked off uh, our new series called Game Pass or Smash. <laughs> I thought it would be fun to go into the PC desktop version of Xbox Game Pass, click on their Surprise Me button, and just see what game we get. Um, and after getting the game pick, we just install it and play it poorly and give it a score out of 10 points. So it's kind of like a review, but not really. It's more like a, you know, let's play this game together and see if it's any good. Uh, the first pick that happened to be in this video is a game called Floppy Nights, which actually turned out to be pretty fun. Uh, it's a cutesy game using vegetables and like a holographic AI kind of theme is what it's supposed to be. Like your character built like this computer arm so you made a floppy dry, uh, floppy uh, disk that has the characters in it that you are going to use to project onto the space or something like that. it's kind of a weird concept but um, not too bad overall all of the the quote-unquote projections that you have are vegetables you know, there's like I forgot the main guy that you use. It's like Captain Cucumber or something like that. You know, they're all they're all vegetables, uh, or like, um, what is it? Succulent. There's there's one called Succulent Kicker that I had, 
Um, so that kind of gets you the idea of <laughs> how the characters look and uh, what their names are. But this game, uh, it's kind of like a battle, like a tactics-based uh, grid map with deck building elements. So it's not too dissimilar from Slay the Spire, if you've played that. Um, and the world map kind of looks like Super Mario, the way that they made it. So it has kind of familiar aspects to it that makes it, you know, pretty good overall, I would say. So if you want to check out the video, you most certainly can view it directly from our videos page on csdcast.com or the Control Salt Delete Cast YouTube channel. And again, that's control spelled like the keyboard control, C-T-R-L. Um, if you are so willing, please leave a like and a comment if you think it'll be, you know, a fun thing to continue with or... Or if not, we just might do it anyway, because I think it's fun. Uh, <laughs> so with that, let's go spelunking the catacombs. Okay, so this segment is all about the world of D&D, &D, or Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so as I mentioned in this episode opening... I ran Session Zero for the Tyranny of Dragons campaign uh, with three brand new players, so we had a good time creating everyone's characters, and I could tell they're they're getting into it, you know, they're, they're looking forward to this, this first session here. Uh, so for this session and the coming sessions, I actually decided to go with mixing uh, old and new school. So we have the character sheets assigned to the, uh, well, to my campaign through D&D &D Beyond. It makes it just a lot easier to keep track of everything for me as the DM, personally, and it just gives more of a, like an interactive format for the players uh, with the its mobile app. So you don't have to constantly be, you know, erasing and writing and erasing and writing. You can just add, you know, status conditions and check your spell slots, prepared spells, etc. Just all, all of which can be controlled by the players themselves or by me as the DM. I can see everybody's uh, character sheets, and I can add a condition if I want to. So let's say I know I know I roll something that blinds somebody. I can add the blind condition to their character sheet, and it'll show up for them and everyone else too. It's pretty cool. Uh, I also got these kind of like, yeah, I would say they're 2D kind of thin plastic minis that have like a print of a character inside of it. They actually have a front and a back, which is fun. Um, I'm going to be putting those onto a dry erase map. I actually have a few dry erase maps that have different terrains, or no terrain, that you can just have a, a plain grid that happens to be on one side of those. Um, I thought that would be fun, you know, to have a more tangible experience when playing, especially first-time players. Um, I'm going to be making some, you know, pretty crude drawings of the buildings and the other portions of the map <laughs> when we prepare for each scenario. So it should be a challenge for me, but also pretty fun as, you know, I, I myself like the, the tangible aspect of the game. And don't get me wrong, like using Foundry VTT or something like Roll20 is still amazing, and I am still updating the maps in there for my other campaign, Tales from the Awning Portal. There's just lots of stuff going on and to keep track of, but that makes it fun, so I shall be sure to let you know how things go once we officially start the campaign. And of course when we, you know, continue on Yawning Portal, because they're starting to get into some cool stuff, and they have no idea what's coming. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, let's, let's see um, what happens there, and again, I'll update you. Why don't we keep a lookout for the little guy, shall we? So a thing we like to do on this show is provide Kickstarter project spotlights every week. Uh, you know, we pick a campaign or two that resonate with us in some way and showcase them so that hopefully reaches a wider audience. Uh, unfortunately for this week, I did not find anything new and exciting for the segment, so... Any project that, you know, I did actually come across that uh, caught my eye, you know, were swiftly removed from this list of options because there just wasn't enough time left on the project or, 
you know, for anyone else to get on it as a backer. So we'll try again next week on that. But I do have sort of an update on one from last week, which was, um, sorry, I mean, look here, it was Soul Passage. That one, like I mentioned last week, uh, video games on Kickstarter tend to kind of not do so great. This one still has, you know, a good, like, 15 days left, and it looks to be about half or less than half um, funded. I don't know about this one. Like I said, it's that 2D Metroidvania-looking game that's very much like um, Hollow Knight in the way it looks. I, I don't know. It it may not have legs. The Kickstarter page looks great. You know, their campaign page is very well done. I I don't know. Video games just don't do so well. Unless they are from a just a ridiculously well-known uh, creator. You know, they've done like 30 projects on Kickstarter and they're all funded in 20 minutes. Like that kind of thing. So that, that I can kind of see going. But um, yeah, I, I... Boy. Those I... Um, I'm sorry about Soul Passage. I, I don't know that it's going to come into fruition but that's just how it goes sometimes and uh i haven't seen any updates either about those other two from a couple of weeks ago the quantum shock and autumn grove manor board games both kind of in the horror genre they haven't launched yet so i'm still looking out for those and uh, we'll give some updates because they look pretty good especially quantum shock it looks like a fun horror game horror survival game so We'll see how that campaign goes once it starts, and um, again, give some updates on that. But for now, let's go into game music and audio. This part of the show is where I put my degree in film, TV, and video game composition to some good use. I would add... Uh, I need to change this um, lyric here. Not lyric, but the, the script. So, yes, this is a scripted podcast, if you can't tell. Um, I do go off on tangents sometimes, but I need to fix this sentence here. So I wanted to add a segment uh, into the podcast where we could talk about game music, audio, and uh, sound design. And I typically try to tie the game played in this week review segment. Although today is going to be a bit unique because it's just going to be about a game that I have always thought the sound design was amazing in. And that game is the Bioshock series. And I've been playing the remastered versions of the Bioshock series as of late. Specifically the first one. Um, and if someone was to pick a game to discuss its sound design, I can think of no better series than Bioshock. I mean, just the intro alone is full of things to talk about. I, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's... Is it when you go under the ocean and hear the muffled sounds of your voice? The debris falling? Uh, how about the absolute struggle to stay afloat? Or, I don't know, the fire all around you, the sound of panic as you swim through the wreckage trying to find your way to shore. Just so many things to pick from. Um, but if, if I were to pick a single thing, it would have to be how the sound design team handled proximity within the game world. So that's, you know, how they strategically put how you as the character can hear how far away something is you know that gives that creepy element uh if the enemy is yelling something or maybe whispering something you know you're either getting creeped out because of how close they are and that you could probably turn around and expect to be pummeled by something or something or someone or whatever it is is pacing back and forth in the distance and mumbling or yelling obscenities at you from there um i mean there's just that gives that spatial awareness feeling that kind of creeps you out. Um, there's also, you know, creaks from the f the doors. 
like something might be coming out of them. Uh, the flooring that you're walking or running on, you know, they did a great job at changing the, the different textures that you're running across. You know, a, a lot of, it's an underwater city, so there are moments in the game where water comes rushing in and you're, you know, sloshing around on, on these different um, floorings because it's kind of wet in there and flooded a bit. Uh, there's also like water dripping from the ceiling or you know coming out of the spewing out of the doors a little bit uh, you know there's things getting like tortured and killed right next to you that you have to watch uh, I mean you know Big Daddy comes rushing in and just drills somebody into a wall you know stuff like that it's just it's so good I mean the sense of space and directional sound is just very well done and mind you, the, the first game came out in 2007 for PC and Xbox 360. Um, so these later uh, remastered uh, iterations came out in 2016. And, you know, with, with remasters, uh, typically comes uh, an overhaul of the entire aesthetic, which in, does include sound. So they probably did up the quality on this, especially if you're wearing... A good pair of headphones, man, can you really feel where you are in this game? And it is absolutely terrifying, as it should be. Um, and it's great. It makes for a great gameplay experience. Um, I can probably safely say that the original copy of this game most certainly did the sound design justice. So, again, bravo. Bravo to 2K Games. Just hired a, a crackpot team on the Bioshock series. I, I'm... I'm excited to go through all these games again and make it back to uh, Bio, um, Bioshock uh, Infinite because that game is just... Ugh. When I first played through that game, I, I can't even... I, I just... It's so good. Just everything about that game. They did so well on everything. But again, the original Bioshock is great. Bioshock 2 is also a great game. It's just They're all the whole series. That's why I wanted to pick this um for the topic of of audio and again i didn't even talk about the music so the music itself i mean it, uh there are actual like 50s and earlier um like real songs that are being played out of the record players and things and the radios in in the game and the composer uh bridged that very well with the um the game music that is not coming from those devices. Uh, those in film we would call source music. So that's something like, um, I don't know, your character is in a car, they turn on the radio and it's a song playing. That's called source music because it's coming from a source that is not, you know, in the outside world that the audience um, knows is not, you know, part of the scene in a sense. So the source music is, again, that 50s and earlier kind of jazz kind of stuff coming from radios and turntables and everything in there. So he used that aesthetic to add uh, horror elements to for the actual game score portion. And it just blends so well, did such a good job overall. I mean, again, if you haven't played Bioshock, do it now. It was actually completely free on the Epic Store, the whole trilogy the, of the remastered versions. Um, and that's what I've been doing, because that's... If, if, if you haven't signed up for it, Epic Games, they release a new game every week, or a new free game every week. And they're usually pretty good, so definitely get in on that. It's never too late to jump in. Uh, but that's all I have for game music and audio. So... Again, a pretty quick episode this week. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot to talk about with the Kickstarter picks, but um, and uh, we didn't have a review again. So hopefully next week we'll have something more um, action-packed, if you will. So let's get into the closing. So typically, in the closing section, we would read your emails that you have sent in, 
And if you would like to send in emails for us to read with any thoughts, questions, comments, theories, concerns, just want to say, hey, feel free to email those to email at csdcast.com. We'll read them in this section. And thank you to everyone again listening to the Control Salt Elite podcast. I have been your host, Tony Britoli. Make sure to follow us on our socials at CSDCast on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. <clears throat> Subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date for more current and future content. Check out our Patreon page as well. We're putting a lot of content out in the coming weeks and months, so definitely check out that page, patreon.com slash csdcast. Again, that's patreon.com forward slash csdcast. And becoming a member there grants you access to our community Discord server and unlocks some special content just for you. So if you become a member, you get some merch um, sneak peeks and maybe some input on our merch once we come out with that. Um, there's also some other amazing tiers, like you just straight up become a mod. Discord mod, YouTube mod, whatever you want. Um, we, and we, we do meet and greets. You are more than welcome to come. We'll buy you a drink or whatever. If you don't drink, we'll buy you food and a water, whatever you want. <laughs> Should be fun. So hope to see you again in the next episode. And thank you for listening to the Control Salt to Lead podcast. <laughs>